This was the moment when the killer was caught on camera, but didn't realize it. The footage would put him behind bars for the rest of his life. Killers are recorded every day without realizing it, like this 19-year-old Michigan teen who live-streamed a murder on social media, a murder that he committed. But first, we go to Texas to cover the tragic case of the shooting of a Texas Tech University police officer. I was down the hall in my office and I heard the gunshot and whenever I wasn't sure what it was and I ran down here to see and I saw him laying there like that. Hollis Daniels. On October 9th, 2017 at Texas Tech University, police officer Floyd East Jr. was shot on campus. Officers were dispatched to the tragic scene and before long they had a suspect, student Hollis Daniels. I guess so. I hadn't been in here since we got here. I heard the gunshot, but that was it. Yeah, you searched. Fully? Apparently not. I was down the hall in my office and I heard the gunshot. And whenever, I wasn't sure what it was and I ran down here to see and I saw him laying there like that. After arriving on campus, officers checked room 134 belonging to Daniels. They performed a welfare check the day before because there was a report of a gunshot coming from his room and the smell of marijuana. Daniels claimed his gun discharged accidentally. But now that story didn't hold up. Uh, this is a room that we came to earlier at Talkington, room 134, for the order of marijuana. Also, we had a report of gunshot last night, so we'll go ahead and key in for a welfare check. They heard one gunshot, and then he texted the roommate in here about it, and then they talked to him, and he at first he said he dropped something, and then he said his gun accidentally went off, and then he saw two holes in, in the wall and floor. Possibly. He never saw the actual gun? He says he did. For a couple seconds, he saw what looked like a 9 millimeter handgun. Probably is some drugs and paraphernalia in there, but we can't tell from plain view, so we'll just go ahead and seize all, all that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and grab a bag and then we'll. Hang on, what's start your name, bud? Come here, buddy. What's up? What's your name? Andreas. No, it's not. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, what's going on? Come on? We've already talked to your other three roommates. We know what they look like. Yeah. That was a good try, though. Hey. hey, hey, hey. Here, stand up for me real quick. Do you have any weapons or anything on you? Interlace your fingers on top of your head. What is this called? Keep, keep your hands right there, okay? I'll explain it to you as soon as I get done. Spread your feet out a little for me. What's all in this pocket? Money. Money? Yeah, I can take it out. During his initial interrogation, Daniels claimed he only had a pellet gun he used for shooting squirrels, but claimed he didn't keep it loaded. The officers questioned why he needed a gun to shoot squirrels in his dorm room, and his story kept unraveling. We came by, uh, we had an order of marijuana come, Sorry? coming from this room. Oh, had an order of marijuana coming from this room. 625 uh, Knocked on the door, someone locked it, so we left. Um, then we also got a report of the gunshot. 343, that's the subject that we flagged the ID for. It came by the room while we were processing sure it. Okay. 635, so speaking with you now. Yeah, so what happened last night? Uh, there was no gunshot. In here? That's what we're told. By who? Somebody that heard it. So, yeah. Oh, no, 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 yeah. I didn't, no, yeah. I didn't, I wasn't even here last night. I was over at my buddy, uh, uh, 28th Street. In fact, I got pulled over last night on the way back from 28th Street. What time was that? About, uh, it was one or two. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Um. So you don't have a prescription for Xanax? That's a lot of Xanax for one person. Uh, well, I'm not distributing it or anything. Uh, oh, 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 you have a, I do have a pellet gun, but it's not loaded. Yeah, we saw that too. Okay. Okay, that's it. Do you have one with you right now? 
Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll stand here. Um, well, what do you use the CO2 gun for? Uh, honestly, I haven't even loaded it since I got here. Uh, back home, we used to just uh, shoot squirrels and stuff. I thought it'd be kind of fun, but then I realized I got here. There's not many squirrels here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and then plus, it's probably not good to have them going to campus like that. Anymore. Well, it's just you know, it, it kind of it kind of looks when, like when when it, whenever we first went in, that was one of the first things we saw, and it's yeah, kind of like with the information we had at the and, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's kind of like you know, yeah. it's a. Uh, it looks bad at first yeah, sight. Bad. I mean, there's we've it seen. Is bad. It is bad. We've seen. I can't even tell you how many CO two guns I've seen oh, um, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. this. But you know, most of the time it's kind of in a drawer or something. Right. Where I, I, I don't even know where I left it out. Body cam footage of a traffic stop the previous evening confirmed Daniel's story that he was at a friend's house. But those friends called to report that Hollis was causing a disturbance, and a fight broke out, causing Daniel's to leave. People at the house claimed he had a gun, but he denied it. Hey, what's going on, man? Sorry, sorry, Lost Police Department. Okay, what's going on tonight, man? Just taking it easy. How's it going? Huh? Where were you coming from? Old buddy's house. Hey, why don't you guys step out for me, okay? Why is that, sir? Because we got a call about you going over there. Uh, who? Huh? Huh? Say so what now? We got a call about you causing a disturbance. A disturbance? Yeah, over at your friend's house. Oh, no. Where's your friend live at? Down this way, and then uh, down. It's, he's on 20, 20, 28th or 29th or something. Okay, what's your friend's name? Uh, Leo. Leo? Yeah. Okay, why is Leo calling us telling us you're, you're messing with him? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, 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 said I was going back over there to see if I could drop my phone. Well, why is he calling us? I'm sorry, I don't know. Huh? I have no idea, sir. So I'm sorry. Okay. Do you have any guns or any weapons in the vehicle? No, sir. Any drugs or anything like that? No, Okay, so why is your buddy calling us? I have no idea, sir. Because I guess he didn't... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure, I'm not sure sir. Well, you come out and step, step out here and talk to me, man, okay? Okay. Is that necessary, sir? Yeah, it is necessary, okay? okay? Yes, sir. You don't have a gun inside the vehicle? No, sir. Why? You have a gun on, on your person? No, sir. Why? No, I'll pat him down. Yeah, I'll pat him down. Do you care down. if we search your vehicle? Yes, sir. I kind of do. Actually. For a vehicle? You don't want us to search your vehicle? Yeah, but not because I don't have a gun. I just, I just don't... I don't know if it's into that. I, it's, not, it's not necessary. I'm on the way home. No, it is necessary because right now you're involved in, in an investigation. Oh, no, sir. No. Where are you coming from? I was coming from my buddy's house. I, I just explained to him. We had a little dispute. He knocked my phone out of my phone. It, not, it wasn't a, like a salt or anything. He knocked my phone out, and so I went back over to his house, and I was looking for my phone to see if it was on the ground, but I couldn't find the phone there. Okay, that's not what we're getting. That's why I'm asking if you have a gun in your car. No. Okay, so you don't want me to search though? Yes. When he was asked the same questions after the shooting, his story changed, and his lies landed him in cuffs on the way to jail. Less than 30 minutes after arriving at the police department, a corporal heard gunshots and raced to the room where Daniels was being kept. He was gone, and Officer Floyd East Jr. had been shot. The manhunt for Daniels had begun. 658, the PD is not secure. Got an officer down, he's shot in our briefing room. We don't know where the suspect went. He's about a 19 year old white male, skinny. Uh, blue jeans, uh, believe a light colored t-shirt. Um, he had muddy mud on his jeans from the knees down. Blue, blue jeans and a white t-shirt? Yeah, and he's got facial hair. Can you can you relay the information one more time Yeah. to our sergeant so we can get all the perimeter units clear on what we're looking for? What's his last name? Um, uh, 625 Tech, can I get the suspect's last and first name? It's, it's on the call show. 90 minutes later, Daniels was found near the Citibank Coliseum and admitted that he was the one who shot Officer East. He was still carrying the 45 caliber handgun that was used to fire the fatal shot. Daniels was caught on video making a call to his family discussing what happened. You know me, I'm not gonna say 
Josh. I was I supported someone who assaulted me yesterday. I said no, he didn't assault me. Uh, you know me. I'm not going to say anything that, that would jeopardize that. I'm just saying that I love you, and you'll get through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my fault that I shouldn't have done this anyway. I'm fucking stupid. Ugh. All right. Can I talk to Dad? Yeah. Hey, Dad. I love you. I love you too, son. I'm just taking it. I don't mind you. I'm just taking it easy right now. Uh, we're waiting for something to happen. I think they're gonna take me to county jail. Um, but uh, you know. Your mother, I think your mother wants to come see you when she gets there. She should. I'm sure she's landed by now. I don't know if I, excuse me, sir, did our visitors allow in this section? Okay, yeah, okay. she can't, she can't come visit in this section. She has to go to county jail whenever I get transported. Okay. Man, Dad, Dad, I'm sorry that, that this is something that... Hollis Daniels was charged with capital murder. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Up next, we go to Canada, where a deranged killer was caught on surveillance camera disposing of his victim. What's wrong? You don't want it. What you wanted to accomplish, Uka, okay? when you succeeded, it's done. Luke Magnota. On May 24, 2012, surveillance camera footage shows two young men enter an apartment complex in Montreal, Quebec. Nearly three hours later, only one of the two men was seen leaving the building, 24-year-old Luca Magnota. The other man, 33-year-old Jun Lin, was never seen again. Magnota was gone for less than 10 minutes and acted as if everything was normal when he returned to the building. He even stopped to fix his hair in the lobby. A little more than a half hour later, Luca was seen putting a bag in a trash barrel. And then he emptied a wastebasket. And then another. After just 6 a.m., a maintenance man discovered what Luca had left behind, but he didn't notice anything out of the ordinary and emptied the barrels to go out with the trash. Luca got lucky and he wasn't done disposing of the evidence of his crime. He threw the victim's clothes in the barrels just after 5 p.m. that day, what appeared to be bed sheets just before 10 p.m. and even more the next morning. Surely someone would have to notice evidence that a crime had been committed, right? Twenty-six days later, on June 19, 2012, Luca Magnota was in a police interrogation room being asked about what happened to Jun Lee. He was found in Paris, France after an international manhunt conducted by Interpol tracked him down at a hotel. He had no good answers and his twisted game was brought to the surface. Okay, Luca, listen, I'm not going to talk about the case. What happened in the past, we can't change anything. Do you understand? The reason why you're here today is because something went wrong. I just want to remain silent about everything. I don't want to say anything about, about anything. And is it because you're scared or? I just want to remain silent. Okay. I have a cigarette. A 
cigarette? Yes. Today we're here not to find out if you did harm Jun Lin. We know all that. We have the evidence that that's not a problem. Okay, what's important for me just right now at this moment is the family. to accomplish, Luca, but you succeeded. It's done. Everybody knows uh, Luca Magnota. You understand? There must be a reason why things went that way. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something happened and, and it pushed you to do what happened. Only you can explain that. Luca, is it because you're scared or how do you feel right now inside? Are you like worried about something? What's your, your, your biggest fear at this moment? You must have a feeling. So you understand? feel tired. Yeah, so that's understandable. On April 12th, 2013, Magnota was indicted on charges of first degree murder, offering indignities to a human body disturbing obscene materials, using the postal service to distribute obscene materials, and criminal harassment. He was sentenced to life in prison with parole eligibility after 25 years. Our next case takes us to Florida, where a 13-year-old cheerleader was lured to her death by a 14-year-old monster. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood, down our main street. Is she good? No, no she's not. she's dead. Aiden Fucci. In St. John's County, Florida, on May 9th, 2021, surveillance camera footage showed two young people, a male and a female, walking on the sidewalk in a quiet neighborhood just after midnight. What the 13-year-old girl didn't know was that it would be the last time she'd be seen alive. And what her 14-year-old assailant didn't know was that this footage would land him behind bars for the rest of his life. The pair can be seen entering the surveillance footage, walking and talking seemingly without a care in the world. But once they passed out of the camera's view, the young man carried out his diabolical plan to steal his young friend's life. The boy is 14-year-old Aiden Fucci, and the 13-year-old girl is Tristan Bailey. Fucci was arrested by police later that same day, May 9th, and on May 12th, he was allowed to speak with his parents in a police interrogation room. The entire meeting was recorded and it gave chilling insight into the idea that his mother knew that he was involved in the girl's murder. Police even had a witness statement claiming that his mother washed his bloody clothes and there was video evidence to back it up. Have they been asking questions? Um, well, they asked like, what color is my hair and what color are my eyes and all that. That's all I am. And then where we live. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood. Down our main street. Is she good? No, no she's not. She's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. That is my problem. You were the you last, were the one, last one seen with her. So right now it's a lot of it's facing you right now, son. So however you talk, you breathe, you think, then you respond. This is very serious, Aiden. You can't act like I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. You can't. And you can't you say nothing. You understand this is serious. Clearly, you understand, right? Mm -hmm. Everything you say will affect you. <sighs> what were you doing outside <clears throat> the late at night? Um, what was that Trey's house? Yeah, with them. 
Did you uh, kiss or do anything with this girl? Be uh, honest as you can to them. To yes. Yeah, I kissed her. Anything further? Mm hmm. So your DNA is gonna be on her. You saw your uh, your shoes were off on the camera. While your shoes off. Because my feet were hurting. And the shoes give me blisters. Did she really grab you and you just really pushed her, or was that? No, she did. Okay. You don't know what happened to her after you pushed her? Mm -mm. Did she say ow or get mad? And she said Aiden. She was like, Aiden? I think I pushed her, but I just told her to F off. And I just walked off. The only direction she walked it? Probably the other way, because she wasn't next to me anymore. You didn't look back or nothing? Mm-mm. Leaving a 13-year-old girl by herself in the middle of the streets at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever time is not smart, bro. Walking home with her in the middle of the night, that wasn't smart either. You stay away from females. Anything could happen. Did you kiss her this night? Mm -hmm. This last night? Mm-hmm. Or at Trey's house? Mm -hmm. On the walk. I still see why you kissed her and then all of a sudden she grabbed you and then you pushed her. Did they ever say why it took you so long to get home? Mm-hmm. What? They asked me why. Why? Why? You said I walked around. By yourself? Mm-hmm. Did you just walk really slow home? No. Mm -hmm. 14-year-old Aiden Fucci was charged with first-degree murder. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison. Ahmaud Arbery in Glen County, Georgia on February 23, 2020. 25-year-old Ahmaud Arbery was out for a jog when he was confronted by two men, Travis and Gregory McMichael. Their neighbor, William Bryan, filmed the confrontation. The men claimed that when they saw Arbery running down the street, they assumed he'd stole something from their property. So they shot him, and William Bryan filmed it. Surveillance video shows Arbery entering their property, but he doesn't take anything, and he was only one of several people who entered the property. The men chased him in their pickup truck, and when they caught up with him, William Bryan's footage shows Travis McMichael holding a shotgun. When officers arrived at the scene of the shooting, one of them asked for Brian's version of events. He spoke to the officers for nearly 10 minutes and told the officer that Arbery and Travis got into a fight and he admitted that he captured video of it with his phone. The officers reviewed the footage and William's story didn't add up. Sir? Hey, All right, so what, you're a passerby or coming through? Nah, not necessarily. Okay. They come running by Step my... up here to say we'll get a chance. Yeah. All right, so where were you located at? Right, 307, which is... Well, I'm going to other traffic. Two houses Okay, you were two houses down. Yeah. At what number again? Oh, 307. 307. Burford. Working on my porch. 307, what now? Burford. 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 That, that, that road turns into Burford right okay. there. All right, so I'm on the porch, and I see him running by, and I see them come by in the white truck. Okay, you guys running by this direction here? Okay, running that direction. Okay, running that direction. Okay, I didn't want to interrupt. So when I we see did receive him, a call from I another man. Like the people getting broken right into out here. Right. You know, so I hollered at them. I said, y'all got him? And he just kept running. He was full bore running down Burford. Um, they got down to the end down there somewhere. I must have passed him because I pulled out of my driveway. I was going to try to block him. But he was going all around it, and I made a few moves at him, you know. Um, and he... He didn't stop. He ran down here, and I stopped about where the fire truck is. And then he, he this way. So I came this way. He got down around the end down there. About halfway, actually, not quite at the end. All right. Pause for a minute. turned around. So first he was running this way. Yep. Then he came back. Yep. All right. I got it. You got it on video. 
I ain't looked at it. Okay. You ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you want to be at what point did you start videoing? Well, I thought he was going to get away. Okay. So that was so the you, you was getting trying to get a, uh, c capture who he looked like? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I probably got two videos, three videos. I mean, I probably okay. started over here. I don't know what I got because okay. half the time I was trying to drive. Uh -huh. Then I realized I had a seatbelt on. I got thrown okay. through the windshield trying to chase this joker. Okay. You know, so I kind of threw the phone down so they didn't tell him what's on there, to be honest with you. Okay. But I think this is on there. Okay. Because at this point, I could see his face with my, my camera. Okay. And because he had turned back around coming this way, so that's the reason I could I picked the phone back up the video at that point. All right, yeah, let's take a look, man. Um, you Later, officers pay Travis a visit at his house to get his side of the story. During the several minute interrogation, he claimed he had no choice but to shoot him. The officers weren't buying the story, but it took two months before an arrest was made. Okay, I'm gonna get some stuff for you to clean up with, all right, Please. sir? Okay, Please. um, we've got to take some pictures of you first. Please. Do whatever you got That's do. we gotta take some photos yeah. and then we'll get something for you to clean up, all right? Alright. Uh go get your camera. Right. Oh, phone's fine. Go get something along those lines and you can get my phone, your phone, whatever. Start using that because I don't have a camera either. And if you'll ask one of those guys if we can get some uh some of the disinfectant wipes. Not like the ones that are gonna burn him, but just something yeah. we can he can clean up with. Thank you. That's okay. Do you have any other weapons or anything on you? Just that. Okay. If he would have stopped, this is what I know. Happened. That's fine. That's fine. Like I said, just take a breath. You're... You got your ID and all that. Yes, it, no, no, no. Don't, don't get blood all over yourself. It's, I, mean, I, I get that your pants are. You need to move around. Do what you need to do, man. That's. I, I can only imagine. You got anybody who wants to call for you? I live right there. I was. We've had break-ins, okay. and my gun stolen. Okay. And uh, we called him the other day, and my dad was outside, and saw him running, running by, and the neighbors pointing and everything. So saw who running by? Him. Okay. So we run out to stop him to talk to him. Mm -hmm. He took well, off running. He came over here, stopped. He came out of the truck, running at us. I told him stop, 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 till he hit me. I had nothing to do. I had good. There's nothing else I can do. I got you. Dispatch one thirty-six. Like I said, we're going to take some photos of you and then we'll let you get cleaned up. I know, I can only imagine, like I said. Um, you're also, we're going to give you a ride to headquarters. You're going to talk to yes, some investigators. Yes, say, we just Everything's got to be done right. I know. I, 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 okay. I want it done right. <laughs> I got you. So. This doesn't look good. I mean, it just shot me. Last thing I've, last thing I've ever done I want to do in my life. I trust me, can truly Watch, understand that. playing with my kid, next thing you know this. Oh, me or you? This is mine? Yes, you. Alright. Hey, sir. Let me just kind of stand like that, so I just want to... Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan were found guilty of interference of rights, which is a federal hate crime, and attempted kidnapping. They were sentenced to life in prison. I have no clue who it was, but all I know is that my brother threatened me and said that we're all going to die that night. Anthony Gilia. On November 8, 2016, in Jackson, Michigan, 20-year-old Anthony Gilia walked up to the front door of a house occupied by 26-year-old Brittany Southwell and fired a fatal bullet after he kicked in a door and entered the house. Gilia didn't know Southwell. It was a random attack. If that isn't bizarre enough, Julia was so intoxicated at the time of the killing, he live-streamed it on his Facebook page for his family, friends, and the world to watch. You know what's funny? I could go over there right now and pop a in the head. I could go pop a in the head. I don't even like my life. Babe, stop. I don't even like my life. No laws, no nothing for me. I don't give a I got a full. I, I got one. In, I got one in the chamber right now. Baby, stop. <laughs> I have no problem. Baby, stop. Okay, Ashley, stand up. You can. Hi, I'll share it with me. Yes. You just made me. She's gonna. She's got it. Say something to me. I need a little bit of That old girl. Mm. I almost want to shoot this gun off right now. Almost. Almost. Baby, stop. But almost isn't enough, right? What's up? What's up, live? Can someone talk to me? Alright, who wants some beef? Who wants some beef? 
All right, if there's just one of you, then I'll fight you. But if there's more than one, I'll f***ing shoot. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm f***ing crazy. Guarantee. Guarantee crazy. I know where they are. Who? I know where they are. I know where they are. Oh, Noah? Let's go. We're going to go find Noah. There's my whip. There's my pistol. There's my pistol. Anthony, I'm on probation. I'm about ready to go. Anthony can be seen and heard laughing on the video. Before long, he started waving the murder around on camera and acting like he was some sort of tough guy. And then he made his way to Brittany's house and stole the 26-year-old mother's life, leaving a child without a mother. Julia was arrested soon after the shooting when an officer spotted his white SUV and recognized it as the vehicle a witness saw leaving the crime scene. He told the arresting officers that he was holding a gun to his head when they pulled him over. When detectives began their interrogation, he claimed he was too drunk to remember details, but proceeded to provide several intricate details of what happened in the house earlier that evening. Matthew, that's me too. And we're up night, see? Horrible night, man. Horrible? All right, I gotta read your rights because you're here in our custody, okay? Mm -hmm. How do you spell your first name? A-N. It turned out that Anthony wasn't in the car alone. His friend, Amber Boardman, was with him. He claimed she was on felony probation but had nothing to do with what he did. After that, his story was all over the place and the detective had his work cut out for him trying to tell fact from fiction. Too much, I was getting persuaded. By Ashley. Ashley Boardman. Boardman. Persuaded to do what? She stopped at the house. She was driving my car because I was intoxicated. Yeah. So Ashley stops at the house with her car? Yeah, because, no, my car. That expedition is mine. I work for it. So you were at the house. She pulls up. I wasn't driving. I know. I'm not worried about you driving. Yeah. So she she had your car? Yeah, she was driving. I had no clue where we were going. We went to, um, you know that little, like, there's a little white house? And then across from that, I, I don't know if it's Lucky um, Bar, but there's like a little, um, there's like a little, uh, um, I'd say like a um, liquor store. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's called Lucky's or whatever. My dad would be able to tell you if he called him. But um, 
we went there, she got me, well, I paid for it, but she got me um, some Smirnoff. Okay. And uh, basically she she went into the tanners and my girlfriend ended up having me chug them all. Okay. But that wasn't because she was trying to get me to do anything that I didn't want to or anything. It's because she wanted to get me hammered or whatever. I don't know. Your girlfriend did? Yeah. You know, you know how that goes. Like yeah. partying or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really the one to party. So, so Ashley's the one that Ashley's the one that comes over in your car. So you're at home, right? Ashley arrives in your car. No, um, well, this is how it started. My mom kicked me out. My and brother was away a while ago. My bro, yeah, yeah. My brother basically broke up with my ex. Your brother? Broke my, up? Bro- my brother broke up with his. Well, Ashley Boardman. Mm-hmm. And then, um... Your brother's actually Ashley Boardman? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I thought it was because he just left her in the dirt. Mm-hmm. And then, basically what happened was, was me and my girlfriend Amber stayed with her and her sister, Lindsay Boardman. Mm-hmm. And, um, she lives in the Ridgewood Vista. Well, um... I showed up there after work, and then, uh, I was like, you know, I want to drink tonight. The 19-year-old murderer is trying to tell the detective what happened without getting himself in trouble. That wasn't possible to do, but he spent several minutes trying anyway. Where where was that in the house where he popped? Is there going to be a bullet hole? I got to go look at the teeth. Make sure it matches up. All right, I had, you know how a 9 millimeter only those 12 shots, right? Yes. Well, I put 12 shots in the chamber, cocked it, put another one in, so like 13. 13 total. Yeah. Okay. Do you think when you shot, you could have hit somebody else? Honestly, yes. Okay. Who was that? I wasn't aiming at anybody. Who did you see in there? A big dude with tattoos. A big dude with tattoos? Is that your brother? No, 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 no. My brother's smarter than me. Okay. I didn't see my brother at all. Okay. I seen just one dude. I went downstairs, and I don't even remember what the place looked like. I went downstairs, the dude, uh, all I seen the dude do is shut the door, and then when he shut the door, I took a shot at the door, but I did it to the left. Okay. When I shot the, do- when I shot the door, I shot it at the left, because when he shut the door, he seen you with the gun, he shut the door? Well, at first he tried to come at me. But when he when he when he see the gun, he took off. Okay. And then um, I shot the left side of the door, the very left side of the door, I think, or something. I don't. I wouldn't be able to know unless okay. I seen it. But oh, um, I shot the very left side of the door. But I wasn't aiming at anybody because I could have killed everybody in that house if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Because there was a girl. And then when I kicked open the door, the girl, girl? The, I think her name was Anastasia. Anastasia? Yeah. Okay. So there's an Anastasia there. What's her last name? How do you know her? Oh, I, I don't know her. You don't know her? No. It's, I think, uh, Ashley. Ashley? Ashley knows who you, Ashley is majorly obsessed with my little brother. Okay. Ashley Borden. Borden. Well, when I got drunk... Ashley was just constantly talking. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Okay. So, let me get this right. This listen to what you're saying is that Ashley's upset with, uh, you're, or obsessed with Noah, right? Oh, yeah. Majorly. Majorly. Noah's over there, okay, with another girl. And I'm guessing that's why Ashley wants to go over there, correct? He eventually got to the part where he kicked the door open, but... Then his story took another detour. He told the detective Brittany tried to grab the gun from him. And there was a man there, or three men. He couldn't decide. I kicked the door open, and then uh, basically, basically I saw Amber run downstairs, and I didn't see anybody else. So I went downstairs to talk to Amber. Okay. Amber tried grabbing the gun from me. Okay. So I went like this, like I had the gun in this hand. I pushed her off the gun just so she wouldn't have the gun because I don't trust her. 
So I push drop the gun. And then... Um, I seen the big dude shut the door. I didn't know if he had a gun. Because this Anastasia girl threatened, um, um, with, I don't know, three different Mexican dude names. Well, when she threatened me with them names, I figured that dude was the dude that she threatened me with. So, um, I didn't know if he had a gun or not. But, um, why did we make, why did we take a shot around the left? You said you took a shot to the door. Why did we do that? Ignorance. Ignorance. Pure ignorance. Did you scare somebody? Dude, I, I fucked up, dude. I'm probably going to go for fucking 20 years or something. No. No. I mean, even if I did, you know, I, I do care, but, you know, I probably nobody, would deserve no, it, dude. No, nobody's dead or anything like that. Okay? All right. So, Polius? Polius Assault? Probably. Of our, <laughs> when I was 16 years old, they got that. Well, that's your 16-year-old stuff goes away. Okay? I don't know, dude. I just need to know the truth, because I'm getting bit of well, bullshit. Well, I mean, I'm giving you the truth. I'm not lying to you. Okay. I'm bullshit. So after you take this shot into the door of the bedroom, okay? You don't know if you hit anybody, right? Oh, no. I, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Did anybody scream? Did anybody howl? Like, did it sound like you got hit? No. Okay, did you see anybody hit? No. Okay, and you said Ashley's in there with you. Ashley Boardman. So they all came. I was only paying attention to me. To you. But I think Ashley was right behind me. Okay. Right behind me. Okay. Okay. My girlfriend, I think. By the end of the interview, all Anthony could do was play the victim card. But no one had any sympathy, of course. Ashley pulled in there and said, this, that, that's that house. Well, that threatened me with three dudes with Hispanic names. I have no clue who it was. But all I know is that my brother threatened me and said that we're all going to die that night. So I kicked in that door and I was going to kill whoever the f*** threatened me. Because I ain't going to go down like that. Gotcha. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm drunk. You guys... F I don't even know, man. Okay. I ain't that type of person. I don't just want to kill people. Dude, I just don't want to get shot. But it's embarrassing. You're going to die by getting shot? I'm gonna just get caught flipping like that. I don't know, dude. You guys are you guys are interviewing interviewing me while I'm intoxicated. I don't know what the f I'm talking about. I see little visions. I don't even remember. My life sucks, dude. I hate my life. Why? I should have just blew my brains out in that fucking expedition, dude. Well, hang on, Anthony. We're back. All right. He was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. At the time of this video, two appeals to reverse the sentence have been denied by the Michigan Court of Appeals. Our sixth case takes us to New Jersey, where a man murdered his longtime friend and threw her body over a bridge. And did you carry her? Did you throw her over your shoulder? Did you drag her? Just picked her up under her shoulders, dragged her. Liam McAdisney. In December 2016, a New Jersey man by the name of Liam McAdisney murdered his longtime friend Sarah Stern because he believed she had a lockbox filled with cash that was left to her mother when she passed away. Not only did McAdisney commit the heinous crime, but he enlisted the help of his friend Preston Taylor to throw her body over a bridge and then confessed to the crime on video. Good money. What's happening, bro? How you doing? How you doing? You want a cigarette? Nah, I'm good. I quit them. Okay. I was smoking a lot of cigarettes while I was tripping. Really? Yeah. I tripped for like a whole, like two months straight. <laughs> what were you doing? Sitting around. <laughs> what you been up to? Hiding from the cops. What's, what happened? Dude, you can't blame me for doing this, right? I gotta feel you up real, real quick, alright? Good. No disrespect. I'll show you. No disrespect, okay? Nothing. Yeah, I got the FBI on my ass, dude. What, what are they questioning? Oh, yeah, a lot. About what? About killing Sarah. They've been, uh... The prosecution used this footage as evidence of his guilt, 
Liam's defense team claimed it was nothing more than a staged audition. What do you think? But then it kept moving up levels and now it's a federal case. They've got the FBI. So you've been laying low, I guess. Oh yeah. And not even, that's not even the worst part. The worst part of it is I thought I was walking out 50 grand, 100 grand in my pocket. Yeah. She had one safe and she took money out and she only had 10 grand. And this money, I don't know if it was Bert or something, it's f***ing old money, terrible quality. Mm. I don't even know if I can put any of it in the f***ing bank. Right, because it'll probably it'll probably look sketchy, right? It looks sketchy and it'll look like it's Sarah's money, especially if it's a federal investigation. Right. If they're looking for the guy who has the f***ing old money. Right, because it's probably like the, the old dollar bills it's not like the new shits, because the hundred dollar bills are changed now. Exactly. No, it's from the eighties, dude. It's old. And then, what? Well, she found it in her house or something? Huh? She found it in her house? Yeah. She spent a lot of money, and I didn't. I didn't even get a quarter of it. So you only got like what seven, seven grand or something? Somewhere around there. And you spent it all? No, I. I haven't even tried to do anything with it because it's in such bad right. shape. Yeah, you can't even use it. Like, I need to play low and then maybe, like, tape some sh up and see if I can put it in the bank. So what, do you have it hidden? Yeah. Where'd you hide it? It's any hook. Mm -hmm. First it was in my house for a long time, but then I stopped trusting Preston. Yeah, what's the deal with Preston? Was he... No, he's cool. He was... Did he end up, like, helping you? Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, tonight we just tried to rob a drug dealer together. We just drove down to, uh, fucking... Oh, is that what you were in South Jersey? For? Yeah, we were down there. We were gonna steal this f***ing guy's safe. And we get to the house, and he moved. He's not at the same f***ing house. That same guy we went to that one time? Both Liam and Preston were arrested and interrogated for hours by investigators. Preston was questioned first and he seemed to give an honest account of what he knew about the night's events. Um, and you, so you went into the back door, did you, the bathroom is right, right, pretty close to that back door? Yes, yeah, so I was going to go inside. Right. right. Did you go anywhere else in the house? I went upstairs to look for Liam's phone. Okay. And I didn't find it. Where in the house did you go? Look for his phone. I looked in Sarah's room in the living room. Okay. Now, was this the first time that you were ever at Sarah's house, or were you there before? This is the first time I was there since the idea came up. I've been to her house years ago, okay. just for hanging out with friends. Okay. Um, so you went into Sarah's room, and you looked for Liam's phone. Did you find it? No. Okay. Um, were you just kind of, like, looking around, or were you, like, tearing through her drawers and stuff like that? I was just looking around. I figured it was just... Uh, his pocket. All right. Did you floor. did you use your phone or um, any phone to call Liam's phone to see if maybe you heard it ring? I think I did. Yeah. Okay. What phone did you use? I used my cell phone. Okay. And I called two maybe three times. Okay. Um, and did you hear it ring? All right. What else other than his bedroom, other than her bedroom, where else in the house did you check? The front living room. Okay. That was it. Okay. Where was the dog? In the cage. You saw the dog in the cage. Did you put the dog in the cage, or was the dog already in the cage? The dog was already in the cage. Was the dog barking or anything? No. All right. Um, did you do anything with the dog? Did you feed the dog, pet the dog, anything? No. Okay. Um, and then what did you do after that? I went straight home. So before you before you left, so you, did you leave Sarah in the bathroom, or did you do something with her? No, I pulled her out back. Okay. Just sat her over on the side. All right, yeah. so when... How, did you carry her? Did you throw her over your shoulder? Did you drag her? Just picked her up on her shoulders. Dragged her. Okay. Um, and you took her out what door? Back door. When it was Liam's turn, investigators began by telling him what he was being charged with and then continued to get details from Preston before escorting Liam to a prison cell. Liam was convicted of first-degree murder and desecration of a body. He was sentenced to life in prison. Taylor pleaded guilty to first-degree robbery, second-degree conspiracy to commit robbery, and second-degree disturbing or desecrating human remains. Our final case takes us to Ohio, where a monster killed a 68-year-old woman 
and offered no explanation as to why. Tell us what happened. I mean, I think you know what happened. I think you just get me want to say it. Michael Olson, in Akron, Ohio, on June 17, 2019, 68-year-old Mary Kay Walforth, an antique dealer, visited her storage unit like she regularly did. Tragically for her, 35-year-old Michael Olson also stopped by the storage facility and it would be the last time anyone saw her alive. Olson assaulted, murdered, and disposed of her body. Dave reported her missing the next morning after he noticed she didn't pick up her morning newspaper and told the police the last place she planned to go was to her storage unit. The officers told him it was too soon to file a missing persons report. The place she was going to, she was going to her storage unit. Well, well listen, we could... I mean, she could have got out, she, she probably let, you said she could have been in Pennsylvania no, somewhere. No, she's not. I talked to them. Okay. Did she on any medications that she that you're worried about? What's your last name? Wolfarth. How do you spell that? W o h l f a r t h. W o h l. I know it seems. I know it's. I know it's irregular. I know it's irregular. But we can't. We can't. I mean, we we could check and wait and see. I mean, she could just not be one to talk to you. I know. I know you say that, but I'm telling you, it's not. Okay. Absolutely not. I mean, she's not talking to anybody. Okay. So, I mean, it's not me. We're just, we're the best of friends. I'm not saying you're not. I, I, but, but what no, I'm saying I is I can't make it a, a missing person adult because she's an adult. She can go and do whatever she wants. You can't make that at all? No. She doesn't have any mental illness that she's on medication or, or this is in a, a at-risk thing uh, she's an adult that's like if okay. i that's like if i left okay. and didn't talk to anybody right you go, mm -hmm. it's right. my choice to get up and leave after dave saw a man enter her storage unit on the video surveillance footage the officers were forced to act and they went to the storage facility the owner led them to mary Kay's unit but on the way he tells them that the unit across from mary's is owned by a man named james olsen father of Michael Olson. When they review the surveillance footage, they see Mary Kay and Michael together outside the units. Video tape from Monday. The unit see. across from it, um, his name's Mike Olson. Mike Olson. Yes. Okay. And he was seen talking to her, and as it kind of unfolded, it shows they were talking, and he was kind of helping her, she was helping him. But then as it progressed, she went in the storage unit, Olsen was eventually found hiding in the basement of a house located down the street from his father's. When he was questioned, he denied knowing anything about what happened to Mary Kay. Go by Mike, Michael? Mike. Mike? Okay. Uh, I'm Sergeant Tony Scarbaggi. I don't know. With Akron. You uh, met Detective Brian uh, Freed? Yeah. Okay. Uh, since you're in cuffs, I, heard so. I got to read you these. All right? These are your oh, Miranda right, Redson. Right, yeah. Yeah, I just. I know you explained a little bit how I'm seeing there, uh, what ha kind of had happened, okay? Of course. Um, so, you know, I just want to kind of, I like to do things formal, and that's why we're down here doing this right now. Um, tell me kind of how this whole thing transpired today. 
I went and picked up some mulch. Uh, Bob and Rose, uh, Rose always yells at me through a window. And, hey, hey Mike. And, you know, my dad was leaving this morning. Hey, Mike. Yeah, but, uh, can I use your coffee pot? So I used, let her use my coffee pot. I was just hanging out today. My dad was out working, and I was kind of doing my own thing. And uh, she said, you know, could you, when we were sitting here having a cigarette, Bob was there, you know, and I was like, uh, she said, can you open that door for me? There's a closet door that always sticks, you know, that I usually just, if there's no lock on or whatever, I thought she meant that, she didn't know the bedroom door, and I went over, I was like, oh, well, Rose is locked from the inside, or, you know, so I was like, you know, I think you guys always keep that window open, why don't I just go around there and, yeah, could you, I don't think you'll fit, and I was like, oh, come on, Rose, I lost weight, shoot, I can get in there, yeah, and so that's what I did. I helped her get her window open, or her door open. Went around there, and it made it look like I tried to, I went to jump in, that's probably what the neighbors saw me doing, I tried to jump in first, and I was like, well, I need a chair. Went over and I opened our freaking bedroom door. It was locked, I just was living there. The uh, landlord, he was like, I guess he tried to get him to get out of there. Sorry, I'm acting like all nervous and talking, but I was just helping them out getting their freaking bedroom door open so they could start getting all the out of there. They asked me, to help them get all the out of the basement and out of the out of the bedroom. Okay, so, so just so I understand that you were they yelled out the window to you in the morning. That was at like eight thirty oh, this right. morning. Yeah. Then I was I was there. I don't. What neighbor called? Because I mean, didn't the neighbor see me doing mulch? I, I don't know which neighbor it matter. was. It yeah. didn't matter. But dude, I was doing mulch for him. I was, and that wasn't like I was charging him for everything. I went and got him a pack of cigarettes. Can you go get cigarettes, Mike, for us? Of course I did. Yeah. Okay. I've been, I've been staying there since February of eighteen with my dad after I moved out of my that way the TPO with my ex girlfriend. They're out there talking to them still, trying to get a statement. So hopefully we. Bob and Rose are here. No, no, they're not here. They're I have. Oh, down there. Oh. Yeah, out there. I here. cannot I freaking believe that they would be. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, they're saying, obviously, you know. I would not, I, I'm, and the one thing I hate in this world is a thief. I'm not, I'm not a thief. I was helping them out, as I've always done. But I've, I've come around, when I, when I was living there on the regular, I'd come around the corner there, and I almost would run Bob over. He'd be face down on the freaking gravel from being too drunk. And pick him up and take him back inside. Okay. Eventually, the officers told him they found a significant amount of blood in his storage unit. Then he claimed he couldn't remember what happened, but said he was sure nothing happened. Do you know why we found any blood in her unit? Pardon me? Why we found blood in her unit? You found blood in her unit? Yeah. Do you have any cuts from when you were... I've got cuts all the time from working construction, man. <laughs> all the time. Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that blood going to be yours? Or? Oh, yeah. This, oh, this is... I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a picker, so sometimes I'll get in there and scratch my nose. Again, the blood that we found in her unit. Oh, is it going to be my blood? No. No, I would, I would that be my blood. I didn't cut myself over there. So no. You know, we could kind of piece together what happened. So, I mean, sometimes, sometimes people f up. And, you know, they do something. They get themselves in a predicament. They get worried. Uh, I mean, something happened on accident. They get scared. Uh, they try to cover it up. They don't want to, you know, try to explain it. Well. Uh, now's the time to explain what happened at the... Uh, uh, was it Monday? Well, there Monday, were yeah, 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 yeah. Tuesday or Sunday, I, there's nothing to explain. We no. Just, no. There's nothing to explain. No. Well, we found blood in your unit. No. Your station. A lot of blood. And here. Do you want to explain that? I mean, I put myself on some glass and... What about here? Mm -hmm. Was like, how long have you been keeping your hair like that? Uh, literally, like two three days. Okay. <laughs> literally, like two three days. Well, you said, uh, I think you said it was about three or four days ago earlier. Well, three four days, two three days. I, like I said, I don't know how my timeline is, man. It sucks. We found lots of blood in your storage unit. Lots of blood. We found sticks, instruments with a lot of blood. No. Way. Michael Olson was charged with aggravated murder and 15 other crimes relating to Mary Kay's death. He pleaded guilty to the murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole.